dear esteemed friends uh, my friend and the brilliant artist mrs shelly jyoti wants me to be with all of you to share our thoughts on gandhi in today's context today as never before we need the example of gandhi he was always on a spiritual journey on cosmic threads which he related to constructive work non-violence and peace i want to relate gandhi to time and space as well i see gandhi's entire life as a spiritual human poetry we have gathered here to relate gandhi to today's time and life <clears throat> the most significant subject today is in the context of the pandemic of covid-19 this pandemic has shattered the human soul but even with the reality of horrifying human tragedies and devastation all over the world there is also the reality of human flow and spiritual reawakening even though we have been isolated from one another there are the human and spiritual forces that have kept us together as never before while we thought that the time has stood still there was a sudden realization also that the time is flowing past us thousands of pandemic warriors are reaching out in some way or the other to the needy and to the families of victims with all of you i pay homage to the great heroes who have been the real essence of humanity the salt of the earth the devastated and shattered human soul is wanting to know what is life what is creation and what are time and space time is witness to our reality as much as our reality is witness to time as time flows by it takes our reality to be stamped in the space time has also laughed a little for the fact that the human being feels that they are the most superior most life in the creation why do i think that as a human being i am the best in creation what do i know about other lives animals speak their language but we don't understand it plants speak their language and have their communication but we don't understand it insects and worms probably have their own philosophy about which we know nothing death and life probably mean something else to them we do not know all we know is that we don't know that we know nothing in this situation what do we do should we let our negativity and violence flare up or should we realize that the human life is given to us that the human life is given to us to respect every other life let us remember that our thoughts and deeds are taken by time to be registered in the space forever once i had the privilege and honor of being in a special audience with the holiness pope francis in the vatican city the pope repeated again and again in five languages the creator always forgives us what what is but what is created never forgets and never forgives if we hurt a tree an animal a life or nature they take the they take the revenge please protect life around you papa francesco's words have been certainly an inspiration 
for me that life is an art of living with beauty, peace, and nonviolence. Gandhi was always a living example of beauty, space, and nonviolence. Even when Gandhi touched an inanimate object, he touched it as though he was touching the life in it. Shelley Jyoti's art expresses her reaction, express, express Expresses her respect. Sorry, sorry, repeat. Shelley Jyoti's art expresses her respect to creation by creating beauty with threads on the spinning wheel. Metaphorically, threads, colors, music, art, friendship all bring us together. I want to share some thoughts with you. What is the sound? What is the vision in the spacelessness without horizon? We think of the space, time and horizon. What would it be without all that? On a thread of creation in a global circle, a pilgrimage of silence seeking in orbit, a moment of enlightenment, of peace and truth, within and without. Right now, we can only hug the moment. We do not understand the time and space or the timelessness and spacelessness, but we know we can hug the moment. Like all of you, I wish that I always remain with the realization that this life is precious and I should respect every other life. With all of you, I pay homage to the life and message of Gandhi and his wife, Kasturba, without whom he could not have been the Mahatma that he was so in, in a way that he has become. Before he became the father of the nation, Kasturba had already unofficially become the mother of the nation. And I pay homage with the greatest power in creation as much as we know is the mother power. And if we can give a bit of that to the next human being, there would be no violence, a very little chance of violence on earth, on this planet. Let us be together in respecting the time and let us hug the moment together. Thank you. Mary. <laughs> Oh, I am hug the moment. Yes. Okay. You, you should talk about that hug the moment. I want to talk about Jitna Bolo Bolo. I have been talking about hug the moment. Here is the endless emptiness of monotony. If I don't float in the deep sea of the void, I drown in the fear of color. But in truth, I have to hug the moment. I am in the moment containing the time and the space. Engulfed by time and space, I am in the moment. In search of the realization of self, where I am one with my soul, the soul of the known and the unknown. In silence of the moment, I can hear the sound of my conscience. Hug the moment, says my conscience. And if we have to search for Gandhi, there's a huge search for Gandhi all over the world. Gandhi does not be belong to India alone. He does not belong to, the, to South Africa also, where they say that they got a lawyer and they returned a Mahatma, which is true. He belongs to the entire humanity. And what did he do, as I said, and I feel it was, I don't know, because he, for better words, better articulation, I would say the spiritual poetry in a human form. Because he hugged the moment and lived the moment with his truth and struggled for that and experimented with truth in, in a holistic way. Uh, whether it was his attire, whether it was...
constructive work, whether it was writing, whether it was food, whether it was a language. And he remains the classic example of what we should do in a moment of either monotony or endless fearlessness today as we see it all around us. But if society has remained together, if human society still exists, let us accept that there is fear, there is violence, but love and compassion are there even stronger than fear. So let us pay homage to the spark of love that is there in each one of us and let us hug the moment. Nice. Yes. I don't know, that is all I can <laughs> Maybe uh, just a line or two about uh, um, my works you are associated with for last few, uh, some time. My to... work? Uh, my dear friend Shelly Jyoti always wants to ask me, always asks me as to what my life means for me. I think of my life as a journey on the thread of the spinning wheel in a metaphorical way, but also it's sort of, for the last so many decades, I have found this journey so adventurous, so romantic, so colorful, which has brought me so close to the world. And it's so many, so much, uh, so much fun. And also it becomes a spiritual journey of humanity. And I have been working, I think it's a working because it is a too big a world. I mean, we're all working, but I'm interested in the problems of, uh, not problems, I'm interested in all different cultures, in languages. And when uh, so many people ask me, are you working for the unprivileged women, the women of the villages and the underdeveloped uh, sections, I refuse to accept the word underdeveloped. Who is underdeveloped? What is development? I mean, we make huge construct, construct such tall buildings. Is that development? Or is the evolution of our mind, the mindset? And education and literacy are different things I have discovered. We are saying, save the child, save the girl child. Girls, children, girls should be educated. Sorry, women are always educated. There is a difference between literacy and education. They're educated, they need the tool of literacy. But I would say, and maybe surprise you, Shelly, it may surprise you, that I think I'm equally there for boy child. Because today's boys need to be given example of love and compassion. All the terrorists, if you meet, if you know, they have gone through brutal childhood. So when they grow up, they become terrorists themselves. Just imagine if a boy doesn't go to school, we laugh at him, what will you do? A girl doesn't go to school, doesn't want to study, at least she can sew, she can cook, she can do something. And if she's pretty enough, she can find a good man, she get married. But boy has to earn. This is our mindset. This is wrong. Boys have to be not just taught by words, by examples of compassion. I mean, Gandhi could not have been so a Mahatma or this figure unless he had had this example of forgiveness in his life and compassion. So actually, uh, when I say I work for, I work for women, I work for, uh, people are working for me, I feel. I am interested in going to various places to find how khadis, the handsman cloth is made. I'm very fond of the word fashion. And as a journalist said, you're Gandhi's granddaughter and you're talking of fashion. I said, fashion is a beautiful word. Do you realize that Gandhi was full of fashion? In the white of his dhoti, you can see so many colors you can't see in my colors. And look at his style of wearing dhoti. 
this dress that he adopted, it is 100 years today. Today, we have just celebrated in Madurai when he decided to wear the dress of a man in action of the rural India. What was it? A half dhoti, a bare chest, and if needed, a chadar. No shoes, no socks, no stitched garment. He decided that 100 years ago in the city of Madurai. And as I was saying in Madurai to all the friends, that it was the soul of the earth there. It was the, it was the soil of the earth and the soul of the people which inspired Gandhi to take that decision. And he wore that. But again, if it was Gandhi was to come, I would like to tell him, which he always, he never spoke about, was his spiritual journey. That is also a traditional Indian attire, not to have anything stitched on you and to always have a length of cloth. And all this I'm discovering on my journey on the thread of the spinning wheel. And I was, uh, I have been divinely privileged to meet beautiful people today and also to have known Gandhi, very close to Gandhi, till I was 14 when he got assassinated in the then Birla house, which is Gandhi's pretty today. I was very close to my mother, grandmother Kasturba and great leaders like Jawaharlal Nehru, Rajkupal Acharya, Sardar Patel, Patsha Khan, Mola Nazar, everyone, Muraji Desai, they all used to come to our house, Indira Gandhi, as members of our family. And one person was not seen that time who is the most popular person today. And who is that? That is the unknown person. That is the security guard. Because there was no fear. Today, unless there is a guard behind me, a security guard, I am not important. And he is the most important person. And what does he mean, the security guard? That he represents my fear. If I remain without fear, his job is gone. Even when we are having a prayer meeting on Bapuji's day, 2nd October, 30th January, or any other day, we are full surrounded by security guards. And we have to wait because naturally the lives of VIPs are very important. Every life is important. Everyone is a VIP. But then I look at the sky and the only life I see free is the birds that fly over them, over us. I mean, we are living in fear and that unnamed security guard is a symbol of my fear. And here I will quote just one instance of uh, Kasturba Gandhi, uh, they were in the prison of Aga Khan Palace. Babuji, Kasturba, and all their colleagues like Mahadev Desai, Sushila Naya, uh, my very distant cousin Manu Behan, who was with him till the last. And I went there to Aga Khan Palace. That time travel was not online, traveling and going in the morning, returning by night. It was hours, days before we could book a train, get to the station, go to the city, stay in a sarai with a kitchen so that you can cook, take a rickshaw or a tonga, and go to the jail warden and wait. And we waited there when my father got down and asked the jail warden permission to go and visit in Aga Palace in Pune to visit uh, Gandhi, my, my grandmother, grandfather and grandmother in the jail. And he, after two hours, three hours, while we were waiting in the sun, my father would come smiling because he would get the permission. Then we would go there and we'd see Ba and Bapuji. It happened a few times, I had experience, but once it was very memorable. I went there and Ba told me, she was alien, she was on the bed. She said, come here, sit next to me, I sat next to her. And she called Manu Ben uh, and Sushila Nai. Get the sari. I was very young then when Bapuji went. I was nearly 14 when Ba went. I was much younger. I was less than 11. But I remember Ba said, 
I have kept a sari for this granddaughter. She gave the first sari to all her granddaughters because she did have her own daughter. And Manu Ben and Sushil and I got the sari for me, Khaji sari. Beautiful Khaji sari is called a Doria or Bihar with a beautiful stitch border. I was so thrilled. I just took it like that and I wanted to run away from the prison. Then why did I want to run away? Because my grandfather was there, silently sitting on the floor, spinning and smiling. I thought my grandfather would say, don't give to Tara, she has everything, give it to a needy person. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at Bapuji and he said, in his eyes, there was a message. In his smile, there was a message. Tara is needy of her grandmother's love. Her grandmother is, is in the need of giving something to her granddaughter. This stuck in my mind, we, can, we are all needy of love. And I got that message from Bakuji when he realized when he spoke of the needy people, he spoke of everyone's need. The last man in the last line of the society, as well as people, privileged people like me, we all need love. And he realized it with everyone. He was a great psychologist. But the other important thing I learned was from my grandmother, Kasturba. I was so happy. I told my grandmother, Ba, I want to play in that huge room of the Aga Khan Palace. I want to go there and play. There is no guard. There is no guard there, you know, because there were guards. At that time, there were guards, I mean, because they were uh, protecting Gandhi from visitors. So, or who knows, they thought Gandhi would run away, which Gandhi would not have done. But I said, I want to go and play there. Ba said, Beta, guard or no guard, you must listen to the orders. When it is not to be done, not to be done. Why do you need a guard? And that is the essence of Swaraj, Swavalamban. Self-control, answerability of the citizen. Gandhi did not have a Gandhi before him. His fight was a citizen's fight, not a fight from a political position or an administrative position or any other political power. He was a citizen's right. It was a citizen's fight. So I think in democracy like India and the whole world is democracy, let the citizens be conscious of their role. We don't have to be responsible for the government. I mean, they can come, they're all there. We don't know what the politicians have to go through. But we, I know, as you know, that what it means to be citizens. And am I doing my duty at the end of the day? I can write a whole, on the whole wall, maybe how many times I failed as a citizen. I think this is the message of Swaraj Swavalamban and Swadeshi, all from my grandmother, in few words, who was considered illiterate, and I would say, but not uneducated, educated. Lovely. <laughs> 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 I will Very nice. I, I have a question and I want to record this yes. question. What does uh, art mean and how can we connect art and Gandhi's philosophies together? Because a way of life, you speak about way of life is also art, right? So art is not only how, how can art inspire how Gandhi's thoughts and inspire? Art is giving dignity to life, but realizing it with uh, as much as possible with respect to life. Mm. As I said, Gandhi touched, even when he touched a thing, it was as though he was touching the soul in it. I may be a carpenter, I may be a mother, One is a great artist like Shelley Jyoti. But there is, there is something that I respect to that. And that is art. 
I mean, art sounds artificial, but art is homage to creation. That we are trying our best to respect creation. And that is how I would describe art. And it is this question is almost like my grandson Vidu saying that, Ma, I want to combine Gandhi with wildlife. I mean, he alone can do it. I don't know how to do that. Because I don't know the language of the, of the forest or the life there. But when he says that, he has understood something and he's saying that. So your question of art is difficult, but I would say it is like paying homage mm -hmm. to creation. Nice. No, super, super nice. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Art is Gandhi Ji ne kabhi bhi bola ki I am very art whenever Rabindranath Tagore as a student in the book invited him to uh, Shanti Niketan for an art uh, uh, lecture Gandhi said I don't know anything about art don't call me for such events so Rabindranath Ji Rabindranath Tagore said that what you do is art what you talk about truth is art how you conduct your life is art Art is creation, even at the thought level. Oh, but, yeah, if you can create, we are, I'm creating. I'm trying to send Gandhi's message through my art. But I'm, but what Ravindranath Tagore said and Gandhi ji, to me, Gandhi ji was a very big artist. Yeah. In himself. He was fighting his political battle because he felt very strongly for men and women of the country and to the world. But, it was an art in itself. I would like to say one thing here uh, that Gandhi's non violent struggle brought India the political freedom. It brought freedom to many other countries in the, uh, in the world. But what we got in India was a political freedom. Uh, and we congratulate ourselves for freedom on the 15th of August. Do we realize even for a second that the British, British should also be congratulated? They got rid of their own injustice. And they got liberated as well. Getting rid of one's own injustice is the final liberation. Exactly. And that is what this country needs today. We have to fight our own injustice, internal, mine, in my life, and in the country, and in the society. Yeah, lovely. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. What a lovely afternoon.